Hi, and welcome. This is the first movie for Excel Chapter 1, Pause and Practice. So I'm going to begin by showing you how you get to the material. So I'm in our Blackboard classroom, and the Pause and pra Practice is the one assignment per chapter that you submit, you begin and end in Blackboard. So I'm going to go into Excel Chapter 1. I went to Lessons, Excel Chapter 1, Assignments. Scroll down and find the Dropbox for the pause and practice. I read through the material, recognize that there are four pause and practices in this chapter. Each chapter would have three or four, depending on the chapter. I also note that I have a file that I need to complete. So you look in this area. I'm going to download Paradise Lakes. I'm in Chrome. So it's down here in the tray. If you're on Firefox, it would be a down arrow up here at the top. I'm going to go ahead and open that up, and I'm going to minimize my Blackboard. So now I have on my other monitor this file right here. So this is the Paradise Lakes. I'm going to enable my editing. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to rename this file. So this file is going to be called, um, so I'm going to do File, Save As. I want to browse and put it somewhere that I know I can find it, because right now it exists in Downloads. I'm going to put it, for me, I'm going to go into my external drive, Summer this class. I'm going to make a new folder called Chapter 1. It's going to have all my Chapter 1 stuff in it. I'm going to go there and I'm going to name it. Your initials, PPE. So it always is the same beginning. Your initials, PP for pause and practice, E for Excel, the chapter number, dash, how many pause and practices there are. So there's four. I'm going to save. Now, <clears throat> what I have, so now I have it named correctly. One of the things that I do want to mention to you, you only rename things in the pause and practice. When you do your labs from SimNet, do not rename anything. Just let it be whatever SimNet gives you. So what I have over here on the right is I have the ebook instructions. So all I did was um, go to the chapter one and uh, opened up the ebook. So that's the orange top um, little uh, tile. And I found the page, excuse me, for pause and practice. Um, and this is 1 1. So we're just going to go through and read this. So open, locate, did it, enabled it, did it. Okay, change the name. I did it. So I'm really here on step three. So this first part is always kind of the same thing find your file, rename it. But we renamed it to the ending file, the end of the chapter. So you don't really need to do the renames on pause and practice two, or pause and practice three, or pause and practice four, because I already started at the name it's going to be. So instead of having these four files for this pause and practice, I'm just going to have one with the ending file name. All right, so we're going to select A1. So let's talk a little bit about what that means. So across the top of Excel is um, the letters for the columns. The rows are represented by the numbers. A intersection of a column letter and a row number is what's known as a cell. So when we see cell A1, I want to go to A1. I can use the name box, which is right here, to identify that I'm in the right spot. I can also see the, the kind of gray on the letter A and the number one tells me that's the, where I'm at. And then the other thing is this green box around your active cell or where you're at is another visual to tell you you're in the right place. So we're just going to type Paradise Lakes Resort and press enter. When I press enter, I'm going to go down. I'm going to go back up here and just do something different. If I hit tab, look at where I go. I go over to B, stay in row one. If I hit enter, 
I'm in column A, next row. So depending on how you're entering data, if you're doing it across, you'd use your tab key. If you're doing a column, you use your enter key. Now let me try this one. Right here is the check mark. If I click on that, it accepts my entry and keeps me in the same cell. So there's three ways. Check mark keeps you there. Tab moves you across. Enter moves you down. So depending on what you want to do, um, you do you do either those any of those keys. Okay, so we're going to go to A10. So I'm going to click in the cell A10. I verify. Okay, I'm in A10. I'm going to type total and enter. So now I want to type this chart in. So G5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So for me, I like to type across. So I'm going to come up here to G5, and I just want to watch how, uh, tell you how I'm typing. So I'm going to do 3075, whoops, tab, 3201, enter. And it's going to work like a typewriter, right? It's going to return to the first cell that I started hitting tab, and then it's going to let me, so 925, tab, 1050, enter, 682, tab, 564, enter, 375, 252, enter, 534, tab, 892, enter. Okay, you could have also certainly just did enter, 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 come back up here, enter, enter, enter. But for me, I like to go across, and at the end of the row, I hit enter, and it takes me back, kind of like pushing your, um, um, you know, the typewriter back to the beginning of the next row. All right, so next thing, fill handle. What does that mean, fill handle? Okay, so you see this little box here? So one of the things you want to really always recognize is what your mouse looks like in Excel, right? So look right now my mouse, which I'm bouncing all over the screen like a maniac. Okay, so see right there? I think it looks like the American Red Cross, you know, like you'd see. Um, it's, it's a thick cross um, with the white in the middle. That is like you're ready. I can click, I can click drag. It's, it's ready to do something, right? It's ready to select. Watch my mouse if I move to this green line. Okay, boom. It changed to a thin black cross with arrowheads on everything. So let me just type my name. Oops, I don't know how to type my name. So now if I click here, watch what happens when I get to that edge. Okay, so that is a move. When you see that thin cross with the arrowheads, it's a move. Now watch if I go to this little box at the corner. That's called the data fill. And I'm going to click on or move to it. And look, it's a thin black cross, no arrowhead. So I know I'm on the right spot. Click and drag. It filled in the data. So I'm going to undo all of that so I don't have it. So we want to use the fill handle. Now the fill handle does a couple things. It does that copy like you just saw me do, or it will actually fill in data. <coughs> Excuse me. So if I click on Sunday, right, and I go to this fill handle, what do you think is going to happen when I bring it all the way across? Well, let's see. I'm going to go there and make sure visually I got the little box at the corner, the data fill handle and I drag. And it's kind of like a little act of faith, right? So it's not doing anything, it's not doing anything. I get to halfway, boom. And look at what is in the tooltip. It's filling in the data series. So it took Sunday and it extended that series. So there's some series that it'll automatically do. So like um, January, February, March, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Or let's say I have one and then I have, oh, let me do zero and five. So I have a series. I have um, an increase of five. If I use that and I go across, it will continue that series, that pattern of increasing it by five. If I just do one, two, then oh, I select both of them. So, and I didn't explain that, I'm sorry select both of them. My green box is around both. So I make sure I have the American Red Cross kind of a look. Hold it, drag, select both of them. It extends it by one. So one of the mistakes that students make is they're here and then they end up here, right? You don't want that look. You got to be here because if I do that, it's moving it, right? <clears throat> okay, so we did the data fill. 
And now they want us to make um, some mistakes, right? So B10, we want to get rid of this. So right now, if you look up here at the formula bar, that always identifies what is actually in the cell. So when I look here, it says 5959, but really 5959 is not in that cell. What's in the cell is this formula that adds all this. We want to get rid of that. So I'm just going to hit my delete key while I'm sitting on it because we're going to put that formula in on our own. All right, so now we're going to go and just make some mistakes. So in order to edit um, and not be, so to be in the cell to do editing, you can double click or you can hit your F2 key. Either way, old school is hitting the F2. So we're just going to make some mistakes. Um, so that we can come back and correct them. So I removed the I from categories. I removed a P from apparel. And then um, <clears throat> we're all set. So the next thing we want to do is indent and align the text. So the big thing here is finding um, how to select multiple cells. So I go to A5, click, right? Click in that cell. Make sure you have that American Red Cross kind of a look. Click, hold, and drag down. So the thing you want to make sure is that you are not on the edge. Um, select all the way down to apparel. So that's A9. Let go. So now your green box should be around all of that range of A5 through A9. We're going to go up to the ribbon. I'm going to expand this for a little bit so you can see it. In the alignment, um, we're going to do an increase indent, right? So we want to make all of these indent a little bit so it, it stands out from the header and the, the kind of the beginning and the end of this area. So in alignment, I'm going to find increase indent. I'm going to hit it twice, right? So now it's a lot easier to see these like start and stop points. And then these are the categories within that. Um, <clears throat> so now we're going to select another range, B4 through H4, B4 through H4. And we're going to, sorry. I, B4 through H4, and we're going to center. So we're going back up here to the alignment, and we're going to find right there. If you're not sure what these buttons mean, just hold it. Tooltip will tell you. Center. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is select B4 through B9, and we're going to cut it. Get those scissors and cut it. We're going to move over to I4 and we're going to paste. So we took Sunday and moved it to the end because we wanted to begin our week on Monday. So now that's great, except now I got this blank column. So I want to do. Um, a different technique to move all this. So let's select everything, right? And remember I said when you're on the edge, it's a move. So go to this edge and get the thin cross with arrowheads. Click, drag it over once, and let go. So I was able to get rid of that gap by moving. Let me undo that and try it again. So first of all, select it all, go to the edge, click hold, drag it one left, let go. Select A1, take a minute to save. We're done with pause and practice one, but remember in pause and, in pause and practices you don't submit this until the end. So I'm going to end this movie. We'll pick up on the next movie with pause and practice two. All right, thanks.